What is up, everybody? This is Goose and Mountaineer Paul, and we are here for another edition of Hoops from the Hills. Thanks, everybody, for hopping on. Sorry we're a little bit late, um, but we are pleased to be joined by the one and only Mr. Jay Koontz, the Director of Player Personnel and Recruiting for the West Virginia foot, uh, men's basketball team. How you doing, Jay? I appreciate that. Definitely not football. Uh, I, they, they got guys who are who's, guys and ladies who specialize in that, and I'm certainly not. I, I'm a football fan. It'd be like putting Madden together and saying, "Okay, here's the ratings. I got this guy. I got that guy." So, um, I, fellas, I appreciate you having me, and, and uh, more importantly, I appreciate the kindness you guys have always showed me throughout uh, my time being with the program. So, uh, it's the least I could do is come see you guys. Absolutely, man. We thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come on. I know you've oh. got a family and. And things and so so we much it's much appreciated on our end as well. Coos, I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, I beat Paul, and Paul, I'm messing with you right now. I'm gonna have some fun with this. I beat you. I had to put Junior down to bed, quick, and that's not easy. <laughs> I mean, he knows the bunny's coming, so he thinks he's gonna get some kind of another prize that the bunny's gonna bring him on uh, this this weekend. But I beat you, and that was quick. I tried to do the two minute drill. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. It's, so it's the last time, I mean. <laughs> So I'm getting ready to, you know, it's like a big show for us, obviously. I'm excited about it. I, I'm getting ready to sign in for this whole thing. And then I see an ambulance lights flashing outside my window. All kinds of stuff's going on. People are running. I'm like, what next going on? And it's it's one of my neighbors that's, that's uh, in really bad health. So oh, sorry uh, I, I got sidetracked checking on that. And then he calls me, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's 834. You know, so I'm sorry about that. You never have to be sorry for being a good bystander. I think you did the right thing. Right. I think you did the right thing. You guys are fine. Appreciate that. But really glad to have you on, man. And uh, it's been an eventful day, not to say the least. It's been a bit eventful past couple of days. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the podcast that he was on the other day? That was uh, one heck of a crowd. <laughs> they really showed him a lot of love, though, man. I, I really enjoyed listening to that. I'd say it was uh, it was a definitely a neat experience, and I'm very thankful to those those gentlemen and ladies as well uh, for giving me the time. Um, I think that's a uh, very um, star fan base that deserves to to enjoy those moments that that they always should have been enjoying, and at least honestly, historically have. And um, just to talk hoops with them and and um, shoot it back and forth. It was, it was very fun. Definitely topics that I wasn't expecting, especially when I, I came in, but they were really, really good people. And uh, I enjoyed my time with them. Now, I assume you're referring to the spaces, the X spaces with the guys that are the folks over power 10. Yeah. Yeah. Very, 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 it was very enjoyable. Those are very nice people. And, and like I said, I appreciate their time and um, definitely a fun experience. I, I, I never had done a spaces thing like that. So it was definitely a first. T will in the house. Matter of fact, there is, there he is. Jay is one of a kind of amazing guy. We need him at Louisville, please. I appreciate that. Man. I appreciate that. And, and he added just for good measure. Respect. Respectfully. Respectfully. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they're good people. Like I said, the chances I've, I've, I've had to obviously interact with them on that side, but in others of DMS and stuff, they're very, very good people. And, hey. and that's awesome. We Mountaineer nation loves Jay and we'd love to keep him, but we understand sometimes life happens. And if, it, if we can't, we wish him the best, man. We hope he lands at Louisville or, or some other, some other awesome program. Because we wish all these, all these, this whole staff really. I wish them nothing but, but good things, man. Uh, I think there's a lot of superstars on this staff. Appreciate that, and obviously yeah. appreciate you being so kind. Obviously, I, I really liked uh, the staff this year. Obviously, <clears throat> tough uh, circumstances all around. <laughs> hey, I, I did that article earlier on when I explained it as World War Three, and, and it was, you know, and. Um, I know that's a bit extreme, but it was, it was rough. Um, yeah, I honestly, you laugh. I have lost probably like 25 pounds in the last two and a half, three weeks, just because wow. I'm getting healthy again, man. Like you gotta mm-hmm. remember, um, eating healthy habits going to bed earlier. Um, much more active as you guys know, my ADD is fantastic to begin with. So I'm pace as it is, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it was, it was long, you know, no one really understands that. And then obviously for people that are, I guess, we're talking to that weren't really privy to West Virginia basketball the last uh, couple of years. You know, I, I took over the roster for the first time about two years ago and I took it over late in June. So, um, you know, I had a lot of work to make up and I really had Kedrian Johnson and four others who no disrespect to any of them, but they were young and whether they were mm-hmm. good enough at that point or not, they were young and didn't have experience. And, 
um, myself. And obviously I, I keep telling everybody this, I appreciate the, the accolade and, uh, and, and all the love, but it's about the process and it's about the people that are doing it with you. And, and, and it's about trust. Um, I had that trust from my previous uh, head coach, Hugs, who I, who I love very much. And, and I always appreciate love. Um, obviously I appreciate Josh more than anything. He's a big brother to me and always will be. Um, but that has a lot to do with it. And again, I'm like, I've always said, I'm more proud of the process. Um, it's no individual. Um, and again, I appreciate all the kindness, but it, it, to see the process um, play out and, and, you know, obviously year one was, was very successful. Um, you know, kind of like other proud uh, programs and traditions, like we have ours where this should be a, uh, annual, a team that's in the NCAA tournament annually. And that's my opinion. I'm hopefully you guys share that same with me. And um, we didn't make it the year before. And, and we went from winning so many games to the following year, making it. Should we have beaten Maryland? Absolutely. I uh, thought there were some things that were interesting in that game. Um, if you watch the women's Iowa State, uh, sorry, Iowa game, same kind of interest things there. I'm not going to go into it, but, um, you know, it, there's, you know, I owe a lot to, you know, obviously Emmett Matthews, Eric Stevenson, Joe Toussaint, Trey Mitchell, all those guys who um, really helped us flip this back to where it should. Like obviously, Kedrin Johnson, I don't want to miss anybody because that whole group, Jimmy Bell, Mo, the guys, Seth, Kobe, who are all mm -hmm. still there now, JoJo, all those guys. And obviously the staff did a wonderful job um, getting the program back to the tournament. And, and you know, it really set us up for the the ultimate uh, roster that we had and, and should have had going into this year. And, and obviously, unfortunately, that uh, that team never got to see the floor together, at least officially. And, and um, you know, I, I hate it for Mountaineer Nation and, and, and for the West Virginia fans because, like others, they're so diehard and, and – and, you know, they they back our programs, basketball, football, all the athletic programs uh, at the school so much. And, and they deserve that team. And that's something that mm -hmm. I will that will probably stick with me for a long time. But um, a lot. And honestly, I, I feel for the guys, too. You know, I, you know, a lot of guys got some bad knocks, you know, and, and things of that nature, which you can never blame those kids. Those kids were uh, ones, even the ones that left were fantastic kids. And, and I've had this conversation with Paul multiple times where even certain targets come up. But. Um, that was a special group and, and I think they could have done big things. And, you know, I, I applaud the guys that stayed and, and, you know, that's, that's the other thing that, you know, you hear from, and, and it's, it's unfortunate because like I said, I care a lot about this place. Like we got some good players here and not because I was involved in the process. Like I was recruiting to a hall of famer and then obviously, you know, West Virginia, like the, mm -hmm. the, the program itself. And it's a proud program with a lot of past success, mm -hmm. but you know, we got some players there that we have never gotten in a long time, if ever. And a lot of them stayed. And, and, and when people were like, oh, they just like, well, listen, let me help you with this. And in the, in the world of NIL, money's money, right? You get to a certain point, it's just money. And then it becomes fit, location, fan base, facilities, cool gear. That's when, and, and, and listen, you know, guys like Jesse, like we beat out Kansas and Gonzaga for Jesse Edwards. Mm -hmm. it, then they offered more money. I, I promise you. Yeah. And again, <laughs> that that's just the truth. Not, not like anyone would believe that if you know both the program and all respect to those guys. They're they're dang good at what they do. But they offered Rayquan Battle. Got all it stayed. Especially after you know the, the, obviously the second incident was the final incident when uh when coach was no longer with us. And um those guys still stayed and and, and committed to uh, committed to play for the staff and coach Eilert. And um obviously the the number and the wins and losses did not uh, get to even where we, we at least on the win side where we wanted them to be um and uh, again that's that's something that the what the biggest i mean people call it the biggest what if se what if season of all time and i i don't think i don't think it, when when national people are coming in saying how good that roster is and how excited everybody was to generally they, they don't miss too many times especially when there's that many of them so it's unfortunate and i, and I hate it for my alma mater i hate it for this yeah. is really my, my my second home, my home home. Like yeah. I've been here, I was here since I like, 18 year old kid. You know, so people don't understand. Like, you know, I came down here for Connecticut. No idea where I came down here is to work for basketball. I, I was a baseball. I was really probably a better baseball player. Loved basketball. It was okay in high school. Really, it wasn't anything special. And um, always wanted to coach. Loved the AAU. Loved the circuit stuff. And and was very fortunate um, at that time. You know, it was obviously uh, Hugs, Coach Harrison, uh, Billy, rest in peace. Uh, Jared, Jared was our ops guy then. Josh was our video coordinator then. Um, you know, and, and obviously was was very fortunate 
all the, and Eric Martin, obviously, who, mm-hmm. by the way, shout out to Eric Martin. He did a great job this season. Awesome. He, he is he's a good coach, but an even better human being. Um, and, and I'm so happy for him and his family. And obviously, Jared had another great year at Youngstown. And, um, you know, like I said, we, we got some, we're very fortunate to have a lot of, uh, whether it be staffers or former coaches all out there doing Benny Asher works for, uh, for Jared and the numerous guys you have in the NBA and, and a lot of teams to their own respect. Obviously, our boy Missoula is doing a great job. Our hometown Celtics, that's why we, we love when they do well. That was even before <laughs> we knew he was going to be the Celtics coach, which is right. still wild. But um, couldn't a great human being, one of the most loyal, nice, caring, loving people you could ever meet. And um, it's really like that across the board. Um, that's the one thing that's so new, unique about our alumni base, whether it be John Flowers and KJ and all these guys that live in town or even the TBT stuff that happens during the mm-hmm. summer. Like It is always a family. And um, like I said, it's a special dynamic. And yeah. I hope that continues. That's the one thing I, I will say. I hope it continues. Um, I, I think today, you know, obviously they ushered in a new era of uh, Mountaineer basketball. Uh, I think Coach DeVries is, is going to kill it. I'm a huge fan. Uh, I've watched him for years now. Obviously, I was with Trey Tucker hit the portal. Of course, I say Derek, he hits the portal of the year that, you know, we could slam dunk him. I didn't have to do any work to get him. But uh, <laughs> he's he's a special player and a very, very nice family from the brief time I've been around them. And um, mm-hmm. like I said, I hope they, they enjoy wonderful success here. Um, and always, whether here or not, I will always be rooting for them uh, any way I can help them. Obviously, we have a good athletic director, uh, Swaggy's athletic director in the, in the country. And, and I believe in, in his uh, his mission and, and, and his vision. And I think he'll, I think, like I said, I think you'll see the program hopefully get back to where it definitely belongs. Good deal. And I appreciate you, Jay, for, you know, during that whole turmoil time there, you could have, I'm sure there were, you probably had opportunities to leave, I would imagine, just like the players uh, did. And I, there's, you know, I appreciate you hanging around and your loyalty well, to the program. I appreciate that. And, you know, um, there was opportunities. It's really honestly wild when something like that happens. You know, you really find out what kind of money people have during those times. Uh, they, you know, they want you to come, they'll pay you this and give you this. And if you bring these guys with you and, uh, you know, it, it, it's wild. And, mm-hmm. you know, there, there was an amount of money in the world. And listen, there, sometimes, obviously, as, as rough the season went, you're like, man, I'm, I'm special. But, uh, no, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I mean, no matter how the season turned out, this is a place that I love and care about. We a fan base that, listen, they're tough and rightfully so. And I wouldn't want it any other way. That's why you laugh. Like, I, even when people engage, like, I, like, oh, be careful when you engage. Listen, just because I – work on a basketball staff where I could doesn't mean I'm um, safe from criticism as anybody else. And, and quite honestly, they're the ones who paid to come see us play. They're the ones who, who literally put their blood, sweat and tears at work to mm-hmm. pay that ticket for them or their family or people to go. And my, it's always nice hearing them out. Now, sometimes there's ways to do things and there's ways not to. And Hey, listen, I I've learned that way too. Trust me. There's plenty of times I've made uh, mistakes and things of that nature, but the fan base is special and, and they deserve to win. Um, they deserve to have that, you know, and, and um, your loyalty as, as the Mountaineer fan base is second to none. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I go to the place that changes things, but again, that that's always home to me. Uh, that place always will remain special to me. And, and you never know. I mean, you, you never, it's never a goodbye just to see you later. Right. If, there you go. And in fact, so, you know, You're on mute, Paul. You're muted. Yeah. Try it again. Yep. Can't hear you. Try going out and coming back in. I do like how y'all got a court in the background. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's a I will, that's a picture I took when I was at a game a couple years ago, and I just decided to use it as a background. Good photo, good photo. You know, it's um pretty floor. It's like I said, it, it's uh you know just to see there to be there that long, and, and honestly to see everything that's changed for what seventeen years. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a running down memory lane a little bit. Right, I hear you. No, but wouldn't change it. Wouldn't trade it for <laughs> Mo <the world>. D. <laughs> I like his comment here by Mo from off of X. He says, "Must be the same sound guy from this morning." <laughs> I, let's, oh man, from the press conference, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to speak about getting fired. I said, someone's get someone's gonna get fired. Yeah, that was bad. I felt bad hey, for him. Hey, you All know right. what? 
I thought he I thought he moved well on the fly. Uh, I was just saying, don't forget to like the video, guys. Oh. Uh, always hit that subscribe button. Uh, and listen, if you got a question for Jay, if you got a question for us, don't be afraid to hit that super chat button, guys. Shoot something through. It's always appreciated to support the channel. We we go out of our way, man, for y'all, and we we love you guys. We appreciate your guys' support. So and, and let me let me say something in that regard too. I, I was like, while it's on topic, um, you know, you guys do a wonderful job. Uh, I think you're always fair, uh, right, wrong, or I mean. Being in the, in the world, whether it, whether you're a writer, whether you are on a pocket, like sometimes your job is to talk about tough subjects. And yeah. I right. think you guys always know whether you can always talk to me about pretty much anything. Right, again, right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, but I think you yeah. guys do a wonderful job, and and you're fair. And and um, I think if, if if people would stop being a lot less sensitive in our world, I think we'd be a lot better. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that, man. It means a lot. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. No problem. It's just the truth. You mentioned Cal, though. What about DJ Burns, man? That kid, he really he developed one of the best players in the country there at Youngstown. And somebody's going to get a stud with that he, kid in the fourth. Yeah, and I'll say this, Calhoun's team. Like he's, Calhoun's done a great job. That staff has done a great he job. He really has. Uh, you know, they've done a great job. Benny Asher, who obviously came up in the same upbringing with me and is a brother to me, um, is a great assistant coach with, with the other rest of the staff. And Listen, they've been right on the cusp the last couple of years. I'm waiting for them to break through. I think they will hopefully again, you know, have another shot go to this year. I mean, Jared's Jared's a cusp away from getting a big time job, and he's a heck of a basketball coach. He truly is. Yeah, and he's he works at it. That whole staff works at it, and um, it, it's different. Like you get off the floor, and and you know, kind of what I do is you know, pretty much director recruiting now the GM this role, which is is really coming very prevalent in uh, the Power Five, and and obviously a lot of the Blue Bloods. Um, and, and you know, like I said, I, I think I fit better in this role. I, I missed the floor side of it, but you know, you just see to, to you you see things differently, right? It, it's a way of sitting, taking a step back, and just observing. And um, like I said, I've been blessed to really be able to be around some good people that teach me how to do that. It's not the easiest process to do, um, but you know, like I said, I you got some special people out there, and then you know, they're they're right on the cusp. They really are. D nice right on the cusp down at Radford. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, That's a good point, too. It is. Before we get any further, we've got to give a shout out to our sponsor real quick. So uh, give us about 40 seconds and we will be right back. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in person today to the home of friends and family pricing, only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. All right, near thanks. you. Near you. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Let's. Uh, we got a super chat. I want to get to now. He pulled it up from Civil Mark, West Virginia. He says, uh, Jay, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but we'll, I'll throw it at you. And if you can answer it, answer it. If not, then we totally understand. But he says, do you think any of last year's staff will be retained? Um, I, I think that's above my head. Um, I think uh, Director Baker, um, obviously Coach DeVries, and, and them have, have a plan. And, um, you know, if, if people are fortunate enough to be part of that, that's fantastic. Uh, right now um, – I haven't heard much, um, but I will say that uh, you respect a new staff coming in and, and doing their thing. And if you get a call, you get a call and they want to talk and there's interest or they want to interview you, you that you're obviously appreciative. But if there isn't, you don't have hard feelings and, and we shouldn't. And, and at the end of the day, um, you know, our job is to win. Um, I think everyone that stayed on after the tough situation during the summer realized that this could be a possibility and, and you approach it that way. Um, no, I've said this to uh, Director Baker a few times, and, and guys, he's wonderful, and I, he hopefully we're lucky enough to have him for a while. But um, you know, I said to him, I, I, I don't know why you want to be an athletic director. I really don't. The, the stuff I, I have enough problems dealing with one recruit at a time and dealing with that stuff. The stuff that that man's had to deal with since he's he's taken over the job, and um, right. he's handled it with class and grace, and and never got the what I'd say this only I've gotten from uh, Rand is, is he's never gone too high or too low in, in tough times, and that's uh, a true testament of a true leader. And 
that's one thing that I, I admire a lot. That's one of the things I admire a lot about him. Others, you know, there, but I mean, he is, he's, he's a true leader and, um, I think he'll do a, continue to do a lot of good things for the, for this university and in the state. Thanks for answering that to, you know, the best you can. The can. best uh, I can. Yeah. Aaron Ripple fishing. Uh, thank you for the four nine nine donation. I don't see any, uh, comment by it, but I'll look and see if maybe you left a comment. Um, some more. Oh yeah, here it is. He says, meant to add it to the super chat, but didn't work. Jay, any idea what DeVries NIL landscape looks like in year one? Is he going to be able to hit the portal with some leverage in that aspect? Uh, I, I think that's there's multiple elements to that question. It's a great question. Um, you know, I keep hearing the one thing is, is you want to build up, which was, again, you know, I, I people understand, like, you know, the high school recruiting. Well, that's important. It still is very important. I don't, I never want to understand that and, and never think that it wasn't important to myself. Obviously I took over two years ago when I took over, I had a class of young guys, I, Kobe, Seth, James, Jamel at that time, um, uh, Josiah, uh, Davis and Josiah Harris who were freshmen and I had Keaty. So I had the plethora of young guys, right? So when you have to flip a roster, which, I've now done three times in less than 24 months. If you think about that, which is a wild thing to think about, and it was long, but um, you did. You have to, oh. yeah, and, and and you have to, you have to really have influx throughout that. And I agree, like classes, um, grades, you, you have to have it and and have a constant flow. We did that with who we added the first portal when we took over with obviously Emmett, uh, Eric, Joe, Trey, because Joe and Trey were coming back, Mo, and then we're coming back for multiple years. Um, James is coming back. You know, obviously Jimmy had another year. So you had it where well, you started having levels, right? Seniors, classes, when you're breaking it down. And then obviously with who we added, with a Kerr, Jess, you know, you had guys. That, okay, you added a couple one-year guys, but you started continuing to add to those levels. And that's what roster management is. Uh, yeah, I keep saying, we didn't bring any, you know, y- y- well, listen, when I took, when the time that we took it over and we changed things, we didn't have that. We thought, okay. We have to get this program back to the NCAA tournament. Uh, the first year we had NIL, I think the total we had to work with, and I don't don't hold me to this, it was less than 300K. And we added Emmett, Eric, Joe, Trey, Mo, Jimmy, uh, Jose, and Omar for less than that. That's – people could get mad at the end of the day. Guys. Yeah, but well, all older guys but have level years, but for less than – 300 K Paul, all those guys for less than 300. Yeah. And right. Kitty at the same time, keeping Kitty that's unheard of. And that, that's not the flood. They did. I mean, obviously it, it was, it worked out well the first year. And then obviously who we added the second year, it, that team was loaded. And there was a reason why people were saying it was the best roster in college basketball. One to 15. There's no question. And look how they played at the road schools. People got mad at Jose. Jose Perez is not a bad kid. He's a good kid. Um, tough right. upbringing. And, but again, you guys got to really know the true story to judge a man's character or judge a man's story. Like that's the truth. You know, you, you judge his character, you judge things, but you don't know what that kid's been through, what he's seen. And everyone has trials and tribulations in life. We all have flaws, some more than others, including myself. I'm, but at the end of the day, Jose is a great kid. And Jose had a lot to do with help putting that program and that, that team together. That's a fact. And I, trying I to agree. keep it together. So I want that to be set on here as well. And, um, you know, I, I don't hold ill will, you know, the, all those guys, Joe, Trey, Mo, Jose, um, Joe, obviously, could we play? Uh, all had re- Jimmy had really good years, and some of those guys weren't starting on this team with that whole group together. And that's where it shows you how scary right. that roster was. You guys didn't even get to see Omar Silvera, which he would have been eligible after the stuff that happened in uh, the winter and would have been playing. And he's probably one of the he's best players. And that's and, and people, you know, people always are going to have their criticisms. That's fair. And like, well, why do we take Raekwon? Well. First off, everyone in the country wanted Raekwon battle. Mm-hmm. If he sat out, did all that stuff. Now, mind you, we had other guys at that time where we were okay with him sitting out. I mean, that's, again, roster manager. We're okay, you can't have him this year, but you could have him uh, the year following. And again, it creates that depth and creates that those levels that we're talking about when building. You're taking Raekwon battle any day of the week, twice on Sunday. And again, obviously, Raekwon oh, yeah. had to do a lot of things. But people, yeah. people have their own ideas, and, and sometimes they have um, – agendas whether they're trying mm-hmm. to whether they like you or not my job is not for you to like me our job is to win games um I, i'm sorry that it didn't end up that way um at the end i 
you know, I, we tried our best at the, again, it happened at the end of the June where we still finished. I mean, and that's the thing that's impressive about the rot and the staff is, you know, we, we had the number one class in the country with Bob Huggins, who's a hall of famer, but we still finished the number one class in the country with the first time interim head coach. You know, yeah. we, we got guys, we got guys that a lot of people wanted to get like Noah. It stinks because Noah, no, it and no disrespect to his past teams. We've never really been coached like that, and I think you guys saw flashes of how talented Noah mm -hmm. could be. But Noah also is is at a, at a level up, so he had to play a different position, which he's never really a point guard. He's a combo scoring guard, and his athleticism, yeah. and speed. It, it, so it's it's and obviously we all know about the best league in America. You know, we were able to fish a guy like Quinn, who Quinn's a vet who has played for another Hall of Fame head coach and has played on a high level for a long time, and he knows the game and is a good player in itself. And Quinn was asked to do a lot early on because of other things going on. Um, yeah. You know, Ofri. Ofri, who is going to be a really good player physically. You know, you saw in the non-conference where he, he did well in battle. And, and obviously, mm -hmm. we're in the best league in America. He got out Mandalove just because of his physicality and, and right. at that time. But, you know, at the end of the day, these are all very good players in their their own. And and, and obviously, things, things they sometimes had to get forced into action quicker than they should have. Yeah. And, and, in a normal situation. And, um Again, not apologizing. I, honestly, I, I wouldn't. That's the truth. I wouldn't do anything different if I could do it over tomorrow. At that time, well, the staff, myself included, um, had to make decisions to try to give this fan base and the people and the program we love so much a chance. And my job was to try to give those guys a chance. And I, obviously, it's it's unfortunate that it didn't work out tomorrow wins. And we are where we are at the moment. But I, I think we all know that was the end tale of what really went on. I think everyone knew what we had and, and and again, it keeps being said is that the one thing that people you get tidbits from different articles is the biggest what if season of all time, and that's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. right. So, but no, I, I think when it goes to the NIL questions, I'm not going too far off topic. I, I wouldn't be able to um, to guess that um, that's a great game. By the way, I'll get to that in a minute. That's a great game. Um, you know, I, I think the trust Stephen Ford, um, his team. Um, Ken Kendrick and them, I think they do a wonderful job. Um, I think they'll give them the best opportunity they can. Um, Coach DeVries will have a chance to get out in the community. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, Ren is a huge advocate and does a great job trying to raise funds for, the, for our student athletes. So there's going to have to be a lot of that. Um, there was a lot of that that the big fella used to do. And, and he was a primary fundraiser for not just the department, but the school. So um, that's going to have to get out ahead. You're going to, I'm, I'm not going to get into specifics any more than that, but they're going to, they're going to have to get out and do that. And they will, like I said, the staff is, I know some guys on the staff for a long time and, and they're fully capable of killing it. And I, I'm, I have so much belief in them and, and I, I can't wait to see what they do. So hopefully my man, hopefully that answers it enough. I, I don't want to go too yeah. much deal just because oh, yeah. I can't, I can't guess or put it. And that's right. not fair to Steven or to his team or to, uh, right. obviously, you know, I, but yeah, I think they'll do a wonderful job no matter what. Yeah, we wouldn't expect you to answer something. Um, you know, we don't. Uh, we we know you can't speculate. Um, yeah. But Nathan Scott with a nine ninety nine super chat. He says, "Jay, thanks for the many years of great memories. My favorite game I, I went to was in the Coliseum. Was a Marquette game. It was sold out, and I think Marquette was ranked number two in the country. Was that the Final Four year with Deshaun hitting the, the, the games at the end? I think that's the game he's talking about, and I'll still never forget running Butler empty out of bounds and Deshaun coming off a crow right in front of our bench and hitting a fadeaway banker and. One of my favorites as well. I think that's the game he's talking about. I, don't, I think that's got to be. Yeah, I think it was a buzz because buzz was there. It was, it was after Tommy Cream. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was with buzz was there. That was the final yeah. four. I think. Yeah, he says the Joe Alexander dunks in that game two. Wow, that was good game two. That was year one. Yeah, that was year one. That was year one. Yep, yep. Joe Alexander's a was a was a bad bad man. Great human being by the yeah. way. Yeah, bad bad man. I remember his. Uh, he was in the same dunk contest as Russell Westbrook his rookie year, and. They had them record these videos just to like kind of show off their jumping ability. Mm -hmm. And Joe Alexander jumped and bounced his head off the rim. Oh, that Joe's was his a, thing. Yeah, he jumped up like in the freak. air and headbutted the rim. That one on national TV. He was oh, like, You see my hops? Dink. <laughs> I was like, What well, the heck is going on I'll here? Play, I think always with Joe and obviously growing up in Connecticut, but you know, obviously that Biggie's tournament the first year. Uh, with D nice, Alex, Deshaun, Joe Alexander, that whole Joe, that whole crew. Um, and obviously they made a nice little run and I, they they played UConn when Joe dunked it on rest in peace, Stanley Robinson, and you always hear our boys saying, Send it in, Joe. But that's one of the, <laughs> my favorite clips as well. Uh Rafferty. So. You surprised his NBA career was uh 
obviously not the greatest NBA career. I know you had a pretty good overseas career. Great overseas um, career. Like, listen, some some guys' playing styles and, and, and things are unique, right? The NBA changes, right? Think about how it's changed in 10 years. And we're talking, yeah. mind you, I've been here 17 or eight, 17 years or whatever it is. So, like, that was year one of 17 years ago. So, think about Guard how it's changed since then. Correct. Yeah. College game, ball screens. Everyone talks yeah. about, I, I mean, I don't ball know. Screen. I don't I think you got to guard. I think you got to guard, be able to guard to a degree, but they've changed the rules in the game to get more offense, which is, yeah. I don't think that's right, but I, I think you guys know we come from the press. Once again, the other night. And, and, <laughs> well, that, 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 I think that's a little bit more than changing the rules. I think yeah. they're making your own rules, but uh, honestly, how about them? I, that That's who deserves a lot of love and, and shout out is that women's basketball program. Mark Kellogg, uh, his staff, the girls, great group of people. Um, Really enjoyed this past year getting to know them. Um, getting to know the girls, really fun group that to be around. Um, staff is so nice, uh, respect, uh, really fun to deal with and work with. And another great hire Ren made there. Um, yeah. I think they're going to have a long term success. And and, and the Kellogg family, great human beings. And um, can, he well, seems uh, like a guy that can coach the mid side. Hey, listen, I think he's a coach of a ball coach is a ball coach. I, I don't get into coaching men or women or right anything. They coach ball, they coach ball. And, and at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I continue. I, I'm excited to continue to follow their path and, and see what he. I think he's going to do some very big things. We've had a couple questions um, in the chat, Jay, about just in general when you're when you're looking in the portal. How do you determine? Do you look at fit? Do you look at uh, you know? Do you just go after the best guys you can get? No. How do you no. determine? How do you determine uh, what guys to go after in the portal? Well, I think you always look at your roster and see what you have, right? So mind you, when you when we collect those levels we're talking about, right? Like say we lose a point guard or we lose this or that, you know, okay, who's the best impact player offensively and defensively that number one, and, and mind you, there's a lot more things actually I, I've added more stuff, which is different Intel companies that can give you, I mean, when you got to make a decision, it's, it's pretty much become almost like a free agency model, right? Where the kids, they get, and they get down to a time and you either make decisions where you want them or you don't. And, or if you don't, you're missing a beat. And um, I have, I actually have my own database, which a people, a couple of people have tried to take and have monetized. And that's not, I, I keep it to myself, but I like a grading system where it goes mm -hmm. offensive deficient off, off the offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency. It has a little bit of Evan Maya stuff. It has a little bit of Cerebro and then the NBA system, like all three of them combined and give you a score. Mm -hmm. And then I could see how they translate. Um, you know, I, I think people will sit there and say, well, this team couldn't guard. No, I wouldn't say they couldn't guard because they guarded other places they played at. Uh, I think this season is going to be a, a fugazi, right? It's, 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 it's a perfect storm of things that uh, people – you saw things – you know, in the media and things to face, but what you guys didn't see was stuff behind the doors and the other yeah. kind of struggles that they went through. And, and again, I, I give Josh and the coaching staff and obviously the administration a great job trying their best to hold it all together. And, you know, there's no quit in the group and, and that I, that's admirable by all of them. And, um, but this, this season, I can't, I don't think, and again, I, the fan base, I understand what exactly what you're going to say is, you know, that's not, that's fair. But at the end of the day, um, these were more than, qualified players they could guard they can score it, it just it, you know meshing them at the same time and then obviously the different injuries or different lovely trials and tribulations that we've dealt with throughout the year they just didn't it didn't make it very uh easy for anybody involved and, yeah. and, and as, a, as a fan base i can only imagine because you guys eat sleep and breathe this team football basketball yeah. you deserve you again as i said it a hundred times i'm not gonna uh, and i'm not an apologist i think anyone that knows me long enough knows that by now but you guys deserve the best. You deserve a team to win. And like I said, yeah, you deserve that first team. And, and, and again, nothing, no disrespect to the other guys. I think the team would have been aligned if, if we had had them all at one time and, and consistently, but mm -hmm. you know, there was just so much going on again, what you all saw, but what also was on the scenes is just um, a lot, but <sighs> yeah. again, it happens, but no, uh, when you look, you look to see fit you always uh, culture. They've come from, from culture that they could fit into um, any off court or, or, mm -hmm uh deals or dealings um a little bit of their upbringing um you know hey how they're doing academically too because at the end of the day if they come here and then they're not gonna be they're not gonna be eligible what's the point of them going after them right. um you know I, I think there's a lot of different things that play out to it I, I want people to understand that whether it's ourselves here or the next staff or you know wherever you're a fan of down the line they, they do their homework they're not just signing a kid because it's the best kid in the world i mean yeah there's some no-brainers let's be honest but at the end of the day 
there's so much details and, and work that's go into it. And, and, um, in the world of the portal, um, you know, it's, it's, you are, and, and people can sit there and say this, all, you are pretty much rebuilding and restocking year after year. And, mm-hmm. and again, at the end of the day, if you retain, they're not playing as much as they want to do. They're out. This is power five. This isn't some of like the mid majors, no disrespect to anybody, but they're not just going to sit by the day all that they should be playing. And if they're not, they're going to go somewhere. It's, it's okay. And you got to understand there's going to be some deflections. That's part of it. Or defections, not deflections. Sorry, wrong part. There are going to be some defections. And, and that's, you have to understand that. And, and, and like I said, I don't, it, it's, it stinks, right? Because like I said to you, like the Joes of the world, the Trey's like, they're great kids, love Mountaineer Nation. Um, a lot of them love hooks and, and they wanted to play for the Hall of Famer. And, and no disrespect to anybody, but when that time happened, they made business decisions, not only just best for them, but best their families. And a lot of other kids would do the same thing. So yeah. we shouldn't make it personal. Um, it stinks. It stinks the way it ended. And uh, again, I, I hurt, trust me, for the entire fan base, because I am part of Mountaineer Nation. I, I went mm-hmm. to school here, now, my, whatever, two or three degrees from here. And um, you all deserve the best. And, and I, hopefully that time's coming. I want to give you guys a shout out too, really quick. The way you guys handled today, you know, you want to talk about class. How about coming to the press conference of the guy that there's no other better way to say it? Look, it looks like he's replacing you guys, right? Oh, there's so, no way. It looks like he is, <laughs> and that's okay. Right. I hate Man, saying okay. it, but no. uh, and here you guys come to the press conference like grown ass men. Dude. I was so proud of all you guys, and I know. Not everybody could be there, um, but still, it, to me, it was a, there was a lot of class there, and I, I just want to give you guys your due on that because you deserve it, uh, and, and then the way you guys have kind of ushered these guys along into their own, and that's how you know you guys love the university and love this state, you know, no because question. at the end of the day, you know, if, you, if you've got an issue with, with this guy that works for the university, it has nothing to do with the university, it's separate. In uh, as best can be, you know, and I appreciate that mindset because that's how I I'm will. with it too. I, I appreciate you saying that, and, and again, at the end of the day, um, I think it just shows that at the end, of, as even when it comes to recruiting, right? I said it's 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 more than just individual stuff, right? Accolades, right? Like the university, the basketball pro and football athletics in general are bigger than one person, and um, for many years we've been blessed to, to have the love and support and, 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 and constant outpouring from the West Virginia fans, good times, tough times or not. And, um, you know, obviously there's no hard feelings, whether whatever happens with some of our support staff or assistance or things of that nature, you know, there, there isn't, and it's a business. You understand the business. Um, trust me, there's plenty of times you said there's not many times, uh, a GM person gets released having the number one class in the same offseason, twice in the same offseason. And yeah. it happens. And again, I, I don't I don't have any ill will. I, I, I hope, like I said to you, when I first got on, Coach DeVries, his staff, the player, the program, I hope it kills it. Uh, this is a program that I'm going to root for no matter what, unless we're playing. Don't get mad at me. I love you all no matter what. Obviously, it's my job is to win those games. But I, other than that, I'm always going to root for them. Um, it will always be important. And like I said, you never know what happens down the line. It, not saying that anything is decided already. I don't know. There's, it's still too unknown. But at the end of the day, um, it's a place that is bigger than one person and and really reflects so many different people in so many different regards. And and that, that's why I think you saw a lot of us there today and um, ushering in the new era and, and supporting uh, Director Baker and um, the other administrators and and obviously new coaching staff who obviously coach DeVries and his family was there and you definitely support them. We want to welcome them and make sure you know, they understand how wonderful this place is. And I, I only got a, a short time to speak with him and I'm maybe, you know, obviously I we will plan to speak a little bit later on, but at the end of the day, um, I, I got a chance to say to him, Hey, listen, man, unbelievable career so far. I've watched you for years. Uh, often had to tell him how to break the ice to him that I was praying oftentimes that Tucker would hit earlier on other years. Um, <laughs> I, I kept going with that. I, I can't get away from that one part of it. That's because I love Tucker for a long time. Um, but, you know, like I said, I said, this is a special place. And, um, you know, it's a passionate fan base, a tough fan base, but you won't want it any other way. Um, you can relate with these people and, and, and they love and care about their athletics and, and their players and their staff so much. And, and listen, sometimes just like we, any family, we get in arguments. We have, sometimes they'll write some not nice things. 
if they're not right, it means they don't care. You know, I always used to tell me, you know, even this would apply to with uh, hugs, call Mr. Happy back in the day. If he's not yelling at you, he doesn't care. The minute he's not yelling at you, you should be worried. And and, and right. you can apply that life lesson in a lot of different things. And the minute the Mountaineer fan base isn't upset or we're losing, they should be upset we lose games. This is a winning culture. This is, it, it always will be. That's was the premise of what they built for so many years before. And I don't want that to change. Not at our expense, not at anybody's expense. And, uh, and I, I think Coach DeVries, I think Tucker will be a stud. Um, let's get him healthy with that shoulder of his. But I think he'll be a stud. And, and yeah. uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, just just like you guys saw this year, you guys, the fans, were incredible. And that's another special shout-out. You know, the support you gave us, and, and obviously he never quit on us when you probably wanted to, and I wouldn't have blamed you at times. Um, uh, it, it's It was special. And, you know, like I said, always be appreciative of that. Yeah, there were times when me and Kuz and I were probably the only post game show around for on YouTube anyway. This uh, in the YouTube community, just because I think a lot of people were so upset. But I don't know that for fact, but pretty sure. See, I, I like when you can see the comments, and I'm thinking to myself, man, thank God, poor coach, poor Josh. Like he had, I mean, he he Josh, you got to give Josh a lot of credit, and and him and his family, and. Um, He's a wonderful human being. His family is one of the more special families out there. Uh, been always so good to me throughout my time. And, and Josh is really, you know, I, I have a little brother, and was, but I've never had a big brother. And Josh is the big brother I never had. And, you know, he's helped me. A lot of people have. And, and that's fair to say a lot of people. But Josh is, is a special individual. And um, good things are coming to him as well. It's just obviously he got thrown into a tough situation. And, you know, I think we'll all be better for it one day. This comment by Lytle, I thought was interesting. It kind of goes hand in hand with what? Did you have something you were going to say? I was here? trying. I was muted. I think you're going. I think you're going, going where I was going. So keep going. Oh, okay. Uh, this comment by Lytle Barnes here is interesting. I think it kind of kind of runs hand in hand with what you were talking about a little bit back just a little ways with Tucker. Uh, does Jay have any opinion on who Coach DeVries should pursue from players already in the transfer portal? And players likely to be in the transfer portal, which you can't speculate on. Well, the best thing in the world, and then we could always have fun with these answers. Uh, right. You you take the personality of your coach. So, yeah. Um, strictly, as we've said before, this isn't a one man show. I'm not certainly not sitting there selecting guys by myself. Um, I think uh, D Rock and, and and his staff will. Um, work together and, and, and get the guys who they want to go after and, and target. There's obviously, we could say this, there's certainly a plethora of them uh, already. Um, <laughs> already. We, we, we laugh. I always have my like pre list of guys I'm hearing. And, and that's the one thing, you know, a lot of my job uh, a lot of times is, is you, know, you guys have seen my board that, man, that's, that's the sap. I had more at the office. I had to say goodbye to my board, but uh, I had the big, the court that you guys see the picture of the background it had, and it's got, I mean, everything it's got, uh, JUCOs, it's got D2s, it's got high majors, mid majors, guys. I watch this out the you know what everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's got coaches that are on the hot seat because, unfortunately, in today's game, you have to recruit those guys. You got to keep an eye on because, hey, listen, the coach, please, they could, you know, it's it's a plethora. And obviously, I, I was telling uh, these guys earlier, I have my own database that uh, I've been very blessed with. It's gone, it's gone very well. And obviously, a two year sample, you can't. Uh, I'm, I'm causing the Milt Mulligan on the second half of the year, taking it that way. But, um, now I don't have to literally, I used to literally have to write every little thing into it. And, and now it's all automatically generated. Mm -hmm. uh, guy plays a game. I have the stats of high school. It, I mean, I, it's, every, it's a one-stop shop, right? And I got to give a lot of uh, shout out to my intern, uh, Josh Khan, who's, who's I brought on this past season and has only made the process better. And, and, and he's been an incredible asset, not only to myself, but the program was overall. And, um, He's going to be a superstar in the future as well. But yeah, I I I, I appreciate that um, that question. Um, I think there's a ton of talent out there at the moment, as as you guys have seen those numbers continue to rise, and they will continue to rise. You're going to hear guys that are going to be they lose to coming up in these games tonight or tomorrow, and they're going to be hitting. Um, mm -hmm. I just think it's a finding the right fits, and and I think uh, I don't think it's fair for me to at, at least at this moment to to speculate who they should go after because. They got a good one. They got they got Tucker. Mm -hmm. So they, that's a heck of a starting point of view. Even if you just that, that's a good starting point. That's Absolutely. that's I think that's a fair thing to say, and I, I hope that's respectable to everybody. And obviously, 
you guys know that I'm just being respectful to the staff and, and, and they got to right. do their own thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't think you'd be able to give specific names, Jay, but I, you know, yeah. out, of, out of respect for the, for the listeners, I wanted to at least acknowledge the question. Absolutely. Um, like I said, you guys, whatever, I, how I have to answer it. Yeah. That's one thing. I, right. I'm an open book and whether or not yep. better for right or wrong. I hear you. Uh, John Christoffer get updated us. Clemson has defeated Arizona tonight. Wow. Big upset. What was the score? Uh, 77 to 72. I'm going to tell you this. This is the best I've seen Clemson play this late in the year ever. Mm -hmm. You know, Brad's been there a long time. That's hey, shout out Jim Clements, our old president. I was going to say that to you. God, I love Jim Clements. Oh my God. I love Jim Clements. But at the end of the day, um, no disrespect to anybody. Obviously going to give a good man to the problem, but Jim Clements, that's my guy. And He's been extremely patient with Brad for a long time. And that people have heard, you know, Brad's been on the hot seat and, and it's paying off. And that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm obviously, uh, unfortunate for Arizona. Um, I gotta ask Kurt to text Kurt how he's feeling at the moment, but, uh, at the end of the day, yeah. um, at the end of the day, uh, that's, that is a big upset. And, but congrats to, to Clemson and Brad and that that's awesome, man. That's you could see, uh, loyalty, consistency paying off and, and, and Brad's a good, good man and a good coach. And, yeah. Obviously, this is the best I've seen them play this late in a long time. Absolutely. You got to get hot at the right time, boys. It's, again, you got to have really good teams. You got to have a little bit of luck and got to get hot at the right time. That's really what a lot of it comes to. You're playing your best basketball late. Uh, got a really cool question here, and I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to say names, so don't go put any names with this. But what is your most interesting portal story in your two years? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> there's always good. There's always there's a lot of them. Um, interesting. Well, having to recruit your own players was definitely uh, the ones that have already committed to you one time, and you got to re-recruit yeah. them. I, I about and I love Kirk Cruiser. They've got all the nice. leverage. Yeah, and I'm gonna say this to you guys too. Like the one thing, like I hope you know, the staff does everything in their their power to keep Kerr. Um, Kerr's a Kerr, first of all, Kerr's one of the best point guards in college basketball. You know, all Kerr's turnovers. I heard it all year. Go look at Kerr's numbers as a to A to T at, at uh, Arizona for the last year. He's one leading this league other than – well, actually one of the leaders in the country in it. Sometimes he's he had to do more this year because of different things we went through. But also Kirk Everybody Kreese was never, trying to do more. Yeah, probably trying to do too much. But everybody doesn't understand. Like Kirk Kreese says, go look at his shooting numbers. Kerr never shot the ball. I did had a great season. year. I'll never forget we were recruiting him. I said, Kerr, now nah, you're going to have to shoot the ball sometimes. And mind you, we just had Eric who – didn't care when to shoot the ball. He was shooting it no matter what. <laughs> you know, I was okay with it. I got co coach, yeah. you know, coach most of the time was okay with it. Just don't be grabbing anything afterwards. <laughs> and uh, I can say that laugh now. It's the last time. It's okay. Um, you know, but oh, of course, I'm hitting the light. That's freaky. But, um, you know, oh, no, don't even start. Um, I, I think with Kerr, like, I'll never forget recruiting him. And, and a lot of people wanted him. I said, now, Kerr, you got to shoot ball. He was, I am point guard. I pass ball. I pass ball. And listen, like, mind you, right? Kerr's English has gotten, well, for better force, has gotten better over the last few, uh, Pat in the software. Oh, gosh. Oh, Touche, pal. But, uh, you know, it's, is, uh, it is like his English was still very broken when he got here. And I can tell you that that's, that's more of a, I want to say a poor story, story, right? When we, when we, um, can you all hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Yeah, sorry. My brother my brother thinks he could call for some reason. Obviously, I'm out of the office, so I, I connect the phone to the thing, and he calls, and it's a whole jumbo thing. You. But no, um, when, when Kirk came in on the visit, myself, Coach Eiler, the whole staff, um, obviously, Hugs, Hugs always used to have this, this – he used to do, like, the big grand tour around town. He always used to go so, so cocky about it, all right? And I'm like, all right, let him have it. You know, but he always had the Escalade. Like, it's cool. It's a nice truck, whatever. Well – Somebody had backed into the Escalade at the BPF, like a, a random guest, and they, it was in the body shop going to work. So he got one of the new Denali's that – now, listen, no disrespect to Coach, but uh, he's not tech savvy by any means necessary. <laughs> uh, mind you, this is the man that I had to beg to get an iPhone because he had a flip phone, and I told him he was embarrassing me. Um, but he didn't know, like, there's a new sensor that you have to hit on the thing to, to get – so instead of – because I knew he knew if we called, it'd be too much. We would crush him. So he dropped the Denali off, and he has that old pickup truck. And you guys heard that story. Oh, yeah. oh my God. And so he's like, oh. I said, Kurt, what are you doing? Like, where are you guys at? We had just gotten done with brunch, and we're going to meet out 
afterwards and the other places we were doing on, on the uh, tour for that day on the schedule. And he said, oh, Coach Coach Hug, uh, we go to his house. He's, we're going to get in the truck. I'm like, what? I'm like, what truck? He said, the pickup truck. And I'm thinking to myself, like, that's like Hugs is – and again, no dis- – I mean, Hugs is still a good human being. You got to look at – things happen in life. Like I said, we all have our flaws, but – look at the human nature side of things and, and, and see past it. You got to look at the human side and trust me during that time. And I told him to his face and hugs is a good dad, but I said, hugs. I was more pissed at hugs than anybody. I mean, yeah, he was forcing me to do a, a third flip in less than 24 months. And I had given him, we, we had given him a heck of a roster that gave him a chance. And he knew that. And obviously he was uh, obviously sorry and, and everything, but you know, it, it, it's just one of those deals, right? Like hugs is, is, a, is a special person. And I, you know, I hope time heals wounds just, just overall, because he did a lot of good here. Um, I think tough situations, like I said, family fights. Sometimes we say some things we don't mean others say some things for us that we certainly don't mean. And I'm not going to go into that, but I'll leave it at that. Um, that man loves this university, this state, just like, the people who had to make tough decisions about him love this university and state. And hopefully one day that we can find a collective whole and, and, and uh, at least bring that back to a good place because to, to, to um, just completely write off what the man had done for this program, the state and the university would, would it'd be a shame. And, and I, quite honestly, it'd be the wrong thing to do, but right. you know, um, that was my spiel on that, but back to the pickup truck. Um, he always had the dogs because June, the girls, they always have dogs. There's dog hair in the back. I'm thinking like, this is a, one of the best point guards in the country. I'm like, we're not getting the kid. I'm like, no. So I start, I start spazzing out. I'm like, hooks. You're not driving in that truck. <laughs> no. He's like, would you relax? And then so Malakali way of hugs. Like, would you just relax? Jesus Christ, relax. I'm like, hugs. You're putting him in the truck where there's sheets where the dogs lay. And I'm like, no. Like, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, I don't care. We'll get it. I'll go to I'll go to rent a car. I get something real quick, and I drop it to you if you can't put the gas chamber. But that's not happening. And uh, it's one of the things that Kerr spoke about with uh, Jonathan Giveney when obviously he committed. And um, it's a huge a reason. Of, yeah, he, yeah, because the it, truck. It just showed, yeah, but it showed you what kind of person <laughs> like Hugs. Like the hug, and again, the yeah. to that side, Hugs is a man who made a lot of money and. and, and would never act like that. He'd give you anything. He, you know, Ronnie ever heard the same way. Like would Ronnie would give you the jacket off his back in negative twenty degree weather. And, and you know, I've been blessed to work with a lot of good people over the years, good human beings. And and you know, Hugs is Hugs is somebody that the guy at the, the uh, corner shop could talk to, you and he talked to you for twenty minutes. Doesn't act like he's Bob Huggins and won't try to talk to you. Like that's that was one of his better traits of all time. And. You know, like I said, just just really like you kind of have memory lane running down. But again, like I said, this isn't a hoax tribute either. I'm just being honest with you and giving emotions that are real truth is going. It's, it's too much a part of who you are in your belief system to not talk about it. You know, especially we're on this subject too closely intertwined to who you are, man. So, well, his, you know, his, his, I know that. Old, he told they always Billy Hahn to quote him always. He said, "You make coffee nervous because of my energy." So. <laughs> uh, you know, rest in peace to Billy, and it's been, obviously I love his family. That's so pretty good. That is no, good. Billy's Billy had a lot of good one-liners, but um, you know that you know my energy and and that side of it, you know, let alone this <clears> this is <throat> a very special place, and I was very fortunate to be here for a long time with them. And um, yeah, like I said, I I wish if if this is it, I wish the program nothing but success, and and kind of always cheer for them. You know, yeah. um. Billy Hahn was one of my very first guests on my on my other show. Um, was he? Yeah, back when I was – at the time, I was trying to do basketball and football on the same channel. And Oof. he was one of my very first guests. And I was very honored that he would come on because I was – you know, nobody – I mean, I was pretty much – I don't even know if I had a 1,000 subscribers yet. I was brand new pretty much and uh, less than a year in, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I thought that was really cool that he was willing to come on my show and talk to me. Uh, we did a game, a game preview or, or, or post game show or something. Um, I can't remember. It was uh, the year after he had retired, but he obviously watched all the games still, right? And oh, I, well, yeah. well, listen, he was over there all the time. I mean, listen, right. I, I will say this: this is, you know, a neat story. I, I will tell you this: this is one I would love to share, um, because you know, obviously, Coach Han was a large part of my life for a long time, mm-hmm. um, both personally, but also you know who you work with, and. Uh, 
obviously we all know he passed away a year ago and, and well not I don't know if it's a year ago now, but um he Close. was always very good to me. I always I would send him guys even just to watch to tell me what he thinks, right? I, I mean there's so many only so many guys you can watch. And again, I certainly don't know everything. I like having other guys, I, other eyes on it and things of that nature. So, you know, Billy, Billy is somebody I trust to watch games and, and you know, obviously talk to him quite frequently. But uh Billy's somebody who who Billy the, the old timers, right? Coach H um hugs. Ronnie to that degree, Eric, all the way through. Um, it was just that work ethic. Like you, you can't be satisfied. Like yeah, you want to sit there and take a break. And say hey man, we did something special. But are you satisfied? Like, that was Billy's go. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? No, coach. I didn't say I was satisfied. I was saying hey yo, we got to go. Well, like, are you satisfied? No, coach. Huh? I didn't say. I didn't, this when I was young. I was terrified to say anything. And um, but ironically. Um, he loved point guards. He was a guard himself, um, recruited Stevie Francis, uh, Steve Blake when he was at Maryland. You know, Billy Billy was a really good coach for a long time and um, really could get some players for a long time. And um, when we got Kerr, he was really excited because, you know, he, he obviously, you know, Kirk, everyone knows Kerr was one of the best point guards in the country. That doesn't change over a year, not taking shots in anybody, just making sure I say it again. No, nah, I don't care. He is one of the best point guards in the country. And he's a great kid, good player. Um, I, again, I hope – you know, they, they work hard to keep them. But at the end of the day, I they do too. at the, at the end of the day, um, the day before he, his incident, when, when he passed, he called me that night and we had, Kerr had just committed to us. I was coming back. My son's mother lives in weird. And I, I had, I think I had to do something up that way. And I was driving back. And it was a lady who called me and, and he had said to me, he's a like, yo dog. I'm like, yes, coach. I just go as yo dog. And, uh, said, you satisfied? You satisfied? I said, Coach, is this a trick? You know I'm not going to say yes. I know you way too well. It's been like, he said, I, I want to tell you this. He goes, you made me really proud. Oh. And I was like, and that, and then obviously a day after, um, you know, he passed away. But, um, oh. you know, oh. I, I, I did, but again, it, it, it was it was uh, someone who has been part of your life a long time. Um, and obviously I have respect for her in this business. Um, he, he, he taught me of, of, of treating everybody, whether it's, the mailman, whether it's John Wooden, whether it's you know, that, with with love, energy, respect, and, and getting to know them because relationships, and that's the one thing that this coaching staff are relationships are very important. And like you said, Billy came on your show right the first time. Mm-hmm. Good God Almighty! Remind me, buy a new lamp. <laughs> but um, I, I I think they 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 taught me the value of relationship, no matter how high or low, it doesn't matter. And, and I will, again, great. Then I'd be appreciative. So that, that's a couple of them in a row. Portal story with Kerr, with Huggers Truck, but obviously, yeah. you know, a little history background there. Oh, and that cool, was something man. that, uh, something that, you know, was, was sad, but also, you know, to hear Billy say that obviously meant a lot. So yeah. I thought I'd share that. I, awesome. Thanks for sharing. I, I got a question I really want to know about. I think this is something a lot of people will be interested in, hopefully. Um, talking about just generally here. Um, so when you get into the money side of this, when you're talking to players, uh, probably some of them have agents, some of them have family members. I'm sure that represent them. Some of them represent themselves. They but all have. They all have advisors. Advisors. Um, generally speaking, what does it take to get? Let's go like two, three different levels here. Let's say a guy, maybe that averages 11 a game, a guy that averages 14 a game, and a guy that averages a tie in like a 17 a game. Or however it's looked at, maybe, or maybe he's looking at a great defender, a uh, great rim protector, or whatever. Let you know the three different levels. But like, is there like a generally accepted dollar amount for certain types of players, or is it just different in every single case? Uh, because uh, like I was talking to some players in the portal in football, and there's a general consensus for offensive linemen, a certain amount. You know. Uh, mm-hmm there's a general consensus for quarters right now in football, you know, and I'm just curious if that translates over to basketball. Um, I'll say this, right. Um, I don't talk money with them. Um, That's true. I, it, it, it's That's almost true. like, you, no, it's, it's okay. It's just the truth. I, I told you, we don't break rules. I mean, it, it, that's the way the things are now. If you, if you, are you, if, now I'll you, there's people that were doing NIL before NIL was a real thing. I think we all know that. But, uh, yeah. Um, I will say that, like I told you, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you, 
you, you make them drink the right way. I think you, you, you let them know that um, obviously you have a good collective and, and a reliable, trustworthy collective that um, does right by the student athletes. Uh, however, payments they get come through by their athletes. And, um, you know, that's that's how you, you earn trust. And, and I think previous guys uh, do that. And, and I'm all kids talk. All kids talk. Um, I've always said this for a long time that your athletes are your best recruiters. And if you don't think that, don't kid yourself. I mean, Tucker said he's on it. I, he'll he'll do it. I told you this. He's I, I'm a big I'm a big Tucker fan. I'm I'm excited to see how it does and, and how it goes. Um, would like to have, like I said, it, I've been blessed. You know, as, as well as things went, you know, before obviously the the the, the uh, Armageddon in the summer last year. Um, before that, you know, our players did a wonderful job adding those other guys and getting those other guys, even when they were on the campus hosting and, and things of that nature. And um, you know, obviously that's another one really I need to give a lot of love and shout out to is our players. I mean, I'm obviously from my upbringing when I was an undergraduate to all those awesome experiences I got because of them. Um, and obviously our coaches them, but obviously our players, a lot of times you're only as good as your players. And I think we, we lose that sometimes. And, um, you know, our, our players do a wonderful job, not only, you know, on the basketball floor usually, but it also um, continue to build the program and being voices for the program during their time, but after as well. And, and I, I want to say thank you to every one of them for that, because every experience I've had at WV ultimately comes because of the way they played. Um, I will say that uh, in regards to that question that you asked, um, I, I will say this, you know, you, you, you know, who's going to be, a pricier one, or just by a lot of times of common knowledge, um, that's you having relationships. Um, you um, being connected, and you know, like I'll tell you this: a lot of times, bigs are more expensive than it because good bigs are very hard to come by. Um, so yeah. I, I think you usually grade it out that way. Um, Lampkin about to get paid. Big Eddie, yeah, Big Eddie's a good yeah. kid. He's, he's he's been fun to talk. He was fun to talk to uh, last time. Um, but he, uh, I've enjoyed watching him and getting to know him a little bit. That would shock me a little bit when I saw that the other day. But in today's world, nothing really shocks you anymore. You, and again, you don't get mad at it. You got to just get past it. You know, I, I think I think for so long we want to beat our heads. Like, listen, does everyone love it? No. But in today's world, you either adapt or you perish. And if you're not willing to get with it and get with the times. Um, you're trying to beat a dead horse. Like, oh, you know, I want the good old – yeah, we all do. It was a lot easier, trust me. I, I would say it's always – but we're also getting players that we could never get before. Um, yeah. This is a hard place to recruit to, and, and people want to say, oh, it's – listen, that's not a Northeast bias in my face. You know, it's a hard place to recruit to. I love this place more than anybody – not more than everybody. It's own people. It's this year. But, again, I love this place. It's my second home. I've been here almost as long as I was born in Connecticut. And – there are still negative stigmatisms about it. And until you get to see it and, and, and see the people, see the facilities and things of that nature, unless they see it, they're not going to believe it anyhow. That's the truth. And half the battle is being able to have juice to get them on campus. And that's true too. Um, you know, people think, oh, just the money. They No, that's not true. Again, a lot of the guys we got, they were offered more money. We all still had to recruit them. We still had to get them here. We still had to woo them. Yeah. That's part of the process. And, you had um, momentum too. Yeah. Well, listen, it, there was momentum, and you know, you had a Hall of Fame coach then. But even even when after hugs, you know, yeah, we got good true. players that were sought after. And you know, again, I, more about the process. I keep saying that, and 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 honestly, again, it's no one person. Certainly not me. Uh, you know, it's it, I'm part of it, but it's certainly not it. And at the end of the day, um, I believe this: the new coach and staff will do will do a wonderful job with however they want to structure it, and and I think they'll be able to do the same. This is a wonderful place with amazing fans uh and a proud tradition so i i hopefully they continue that and, and get back to where it needs to be awesome um we're probably gonna have to wrap this up here soon paul do you have any last questions for jay before we uh before we get out of here no uh i, I just want to thank jay for his continued friendship and uh appreciate him coming on the show absolutely um, if anything happens on the job front for you or anything like that in the future. Hopefully we can still have you on uh, as long as you're allowed to be. Um, you know, we're not, cause you know, at least with this show, we're not going to put you in a position where we're going to like, you know, 
What are you trying to say? Catch off guard. Trying try to get me? Go. Yeah, right. We're not going to. We're not going to you know, suddenly oh, pull you over in Pittsburgh. We're oh, not going to suddenly man. pull you over in Pittsburgh, man. You know. Wow. <laughs> I know where we're going. I know we're going there. Damn Taylor Swift. But anyhow, um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's her fault. I, 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 I think it's coach's fault. But I think that yeah, yeah, Taylor Swift. Oh. She, I'll never look at her same. <laughs> Although they, I, I didn't look at the same after that the Chiefs came back and beat the Jets in the middle ends and they kept showing her more than which mind you know maybe it was better that that than watching the game because the Jets I just agree. continuously anger me. But no man, on a on a serious note, I, I appreciate you all. Um, not just obviously what you do with your show and things of that nature, but as as uh, as fans, as uh, as true fans, and uh, always being so kind throughout the years. Um, does it doesn't cost any more to be kind to people and. Um, I will always appreciate that. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not dying. Um, whether I'm here, or I'm not. Um, my phone's always on. Uh, always willing to talk hoops. We we'll talk about whoever, whether it's here or whether we're going after. And um, like I said, I I owe so I have so much gratitude to to the state, to uh, the people who helped me grow up, um, and were there throughout me growing up for the good times and the, and the times that were like, oh man, we, this guy is one of a kind. But of course, I, I appreciate that, and um, you know, like I said, I no ill will nor no sour grapes. I, I will continue to support this program, love this program, live, eat, and breathe it. Coach Mac uh, Ryan, he's got his uh, the podcast over there. Mm-hmm. Same way with him, and, and I get I, maybe I could talk to Ryan a little bit more now about the stuff until like if I uh, whether it be here or elsewhere, could start working again. But uh, you know, Ryan, uh, guys just like him, you know, we we have a bunch of people that when they leave, we always care about the program. And, yeah. and that's, like I said, when you said you saw everybody, a lot of people there today, that's yeah. what it's really about. Yeah. Awesome, so, man. Yeah. I appreciate the, the memories and through the years. Yep. Promote tomorrow's episode if you don't care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow we're going to be interviewing um, Coach Jared. his brother, Jared. I couldn't think of his first name. I almost said the other brother's name. We're going to be interviewing Jared DeVries, who's the brother of – uh, Darren DeVries and also a former NFL player spent 12 years in the NFL. I think it was with the Detroit Lions, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, we're looking yeah. forward to that one. That one will be probably won't be live, it'll probably we'll probably record that one, but but it should be out sometime tomorrow. So, be on the lookout for that one. What a, what a story about that, too, man. Honestly, you know, that's if yeah. you guys haven't read that chance and anyone listening or ever watching this, and let's watch it, look into that. I mean, I think obviously, uh, this isn't I was I think Coach DeVries I was well documented. He's a good basketball coach. He's not getting hired mm-hmm. at WVU if he's not. But yeah. at the end of the day, um the family background, the history, you know, stuff that you could read within the past and it's out there to find a, a wonderful story and, and probably make you feel even a closer connection with yeah. with somebody who I believe is gonna be a special person here at, at WVU and, and the state for a long time. Awesome. Awesome, dude. Well, everybody, uh, kind words. yeah, absolutely. And uh, so don't forget about that show again. Thanks to Jay for coming on, guys. If you're watching this, whether it's live, whether you're watching it the replay, likes still help us, comments help us, sharing it with your family and friends helps us. All of that helps get our program out to more people. Uh, let's put Hoops from the Hills on the map. We're real, we're that close to getting to 1500 subs, guys. Helps help us get there. I think we need seven or eight more subs to get to 1500. And for a channel, you know not much older than a year. It's not too bad. No, so you guys, anyway, you guys are a good one. But uh, thanks to everybody for hopping in here tonight. We've had a great show. We've had a great time talking with Jay. And we're done. There you go, fellas. I appreciate you both. You know that. <laughs>